All right. Hello and welcome. How y'all doing? Good, good, good. Welcome to the New Orleans Jazz Museum. On behalf of New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park, we want to thank you for coming to Talk in Jazz with Fred Caston. Um, this is a program that's a part of the National Park Service. Uh, the mission of the National Park Service is to, well, specifically, the mission of New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park is to instill a public appreciation for New Orleans jazz music. And we do so by having programs that educate you, enlighten you, and hopefully entertain you. Before we get started with this program, I ask that you please silence your cell phones so you don't interrupt the, audio, well, the guest artist and your neighbor. And a little bit more about Talking Jazz with Fred Caston. This is a program that dives deep into the artist's uh, career and life with fun um, demonstrations of their works. And so uh, this is a very special Talking Jazz uh, series or well, special program today. We've been trying to get this particular artist here for some time. Um, and I'm so happy from, as a vocalist, it's always good to see vocalists being um, highlighted. And so this artist, Gabrielle Cavassa, is a California-born, New Orleans-based vocalist and composer. Uh, in 2021, she won the Sarah Vaughan uh, Vocal Jazz Competition. And so she also joined many other vocalists who have won that competition. And she is still um, taking her career in higher heights. You may have seen her with Trumpet Mafia. You may have seen her around town and also may have seen her at Ascona Jazz Festival. And so she has been doing her thing in the jazz uh, community. And also Fred Caston is a, a WWNO uh, independent show, TV radio host and um, interviewer. And he has been awarded throughout his career. And so I'm going to get out the way so we let the masters take it away. So give it up for Talking Jazz with Fred Caston. Thank you, folks, and thank you, Jade, very much. Thanks for joining us here this afternoon on this beautiful spring day, kind of day you should savor in any era, but particularly in weather of 2023. Uh, but thanks for coming inside. I think you'll be well rewarded by the music and the uh, conversation with three of our most uh, creative and talented artists working in New Orleans today. I want you to meet them now. They're going to open the show this afternoon with some music for us. Please welcome at the bass, Mr. Lex Warshawski. <laughs> Our man on piano today, Oscar Rossignoli. <laughs> and the wonderful singer, songwriter, great vocalist, and playing things as they are on the blue guitar. Please welcome Gabrielle Cavassa. Hi, Gabrielle. At last, cue uh, Etta James, right? Yeah. <laughs> so take it away with, okay, a, with yeah. some music. I still have a, some honey in my mouth. So. That's what everyone says. My prelude to a 
Exquisite prelude to a kiss. One more for us before we talk. 
It's called I Thought About You. I spent the evening in bed I thought about you The liquor got to my head I thought about you Why do I lie here waiting to die here Just thinking of when You
the evening all alone in bed I thought about you The liquor got to my head I can't stop thinking about you, baby Why do I lie and waiting to die here Just thinking of what Thought about you, ladies and gentlemen. Lex Wachowski at the bass, Oscar Rossignoli, piano, and Miss Gabrielle Cavassa, beautiful job on the vocals. Thank you. And if you uh, thought to yourself, self, that's not exactly Johnny Mercer's lyric to that Jimmy Van Heusen composition. Uh, you're right. Because ha about half of that is Gabrielle Cavassa's, the open and the close, mm -hmm. and a little bit of Johnny Mercer in there as yeah. well. I thought about you. Uh, I read that uh, he um, heard that uh, Van Heusen played that for him one afternoon in New York, and then he had to hop a train to Chicago uh -huh. that night, and he's thinking about the tune, and that's when he got the idea. I thought about you. It's a good idea. Yeah, it works very nicely. I uh, want to talk a little bit, uh, Gabrielle, about your uh, beginnings in music. Uh, you grew up in Escondido. I did. Ca California. That's a bit north of San Diego. How, how close? Like 20 minutes, no yeah, traffic. Yeah, just kind of a suburban, uh, yeah. but a, a city of, uh, into its own. Yeah. Uh, was music a, a, a part of life early for you, or uh, how did that work? How did you get connected with music? Um, yes, I think music was a part of life early for me. Um, I don't know that it was necessarily like given to me, but um, there's music all around, and I think from when I was really young, I was extremely um, interested in it, and... I just loved it, um, you know. So whenever there was music, like my parents' um, CDs, my grandparents' music that they liked, their records. Um, I loved Christmas because like more music would happen at Christmas. Right. Yeah, but it wasn't like I was in a music family or something. But right. Uh, d did you ever uh, hear of or uh, know about Jeannie and Jimmy Cheatham uh, in in San Diego? No. Singer and uh, trombonist had a great band. And you know, I'm not very connected with like the San Diego scene. Yeah. I left there when I was 17, and I never, you know, I grew up in right. Escondido, not San, not Diego. San Diego. I never like was really there. So yeah, hanging out down. I know very little about uh, yeah who was there. Uh, well, what about your your uh, interest in music? How did that express itself? Um, well, it just did. Uh, singing, playing something. Did yeah, you singing. Try I an mean, instrument? singing's like the original instrument, so. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just, I really, really loved music. I still do. And um, I think I was always just singing. And uh, as soon as I could, I really wanted to be involved in like the stuff at school, like the plays. And um, I would audition. And, and we had a piano also at the house. So I would always be like picking stuff out. And uh, yeah, I got involved as soon as I could in like anything at school and like youth choir stuff. And I was like begging my parents, like, please, can I be in the musical? And they'd be like, no, it's too expensive. And then I'd like write a song and I'd be like, please, can I be in the musical? And, <laughs> and then they'd be like, Jesus, yeah. fine. Um, so I was always like just dying to do anything. And there was lots of, lots of stuff. So music was a, a form of expression and uh, inquiry yes. early on. Definitely. I think about that now, like, that's how I always felt you know, good to like show my feelings and, um, you know, I feel like there's so much like repression, especially, I'm not especially of kids, but I don't know, you feel all kind of things, even like 
sexuality and, and these big adult topics that I was singing about, because I didn't start with like children's songs, I started with like songs. And so you're singing and, and you know, they're very, it's very advanced feelings and sometimes they're, they're sad songs or like depressing songs or really sexual songs. And I just couldn't believe I would be allowed to express that. And then people would be like, yay. <laughs> and I always was just so fascinated. And I always, I, it's so much better received when I sing than when I speak. So, yeah. So that, uh, that was something that was valuable to you and developed at, as, yeah. as you went along. Um, and I, I uh, read that you had, um, you mentioned your, your folks had some, some records you like to play and you like Christmas. There was a particular Christmas record with Nancy Wilson. Yeah. Had an Ella Fitzgerald tune on mm -hmm. it that kind of uh, got you going in that jazz vein a little bit. Yeah, I thought that like um, like swing was like Christmas music. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can be. I was like, I was in California. I really didn't know what I was doing. And um, yeah, I loved, there was the things we did last summer. That mm -hmm. was um, Nancy Wilson song. And then there was some stuff from, it was a compilation album. Ella Fitzgerald, like, um, from Swingin' Christmas, or that record. And yeah, I was just in love with that stuff, and I would replay it constantly. Would you try then to, to sing along with it? Mm hmm Yeah. I was a big, you know, imitator, like, just trying per to imitate, like, perfectly what they were doing. Um, yeah, I would get really uh, obsessive about listening to things and trying to, like, repeat it exactly, like, mm -hmm. late into the night. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I, uh, you also had uh, an Italian grandfather who loved Sinatra. Yeah, and grandmother. And, grandmother. and actually, my grandmother's really the music lover. My grandfather, like, I don't know if he, <laughs> he loves opera, and he liked. He has a really big voice too. It's kind of a joke, but he always yeah. used to like sing to me. You could sing back and forth to each yeah, other. Yeah, we used to. Yeah. And yeah, both my grandparents are um, really tapped into music and Italian music. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you mentioned uh, talking about uh, doing plays or getting involved in school activities where, with performance. Were you able to do that? Yeah, in school, yeah. I was always like, you know, auditioning for stuff. I want, my career sort of ended because I'm just such a bad dancer, <laughs> um, like a double threat. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like, I, I remember I had like the starring role. I think I was like, in middle school at this point, and it was Little, or us starring, it was Little Red Riding Hood in um, Into the Woods. And this was like a good youth theater group and took a lot of time and everyone was very good. There was a lot of good singers that I grew up with there. And, um, and I just couldn't like remember the choreography at all or the blocking. Like once I would start singing, I would just like wander the stage <laughs> <laughs> and I just didn't. So not for me, but um, that's definitely where I started. Uh -huh. uh, with the experience of uh, performing, uh, was that something you were getting comfortable with then? Yeah, you know, in, in high school, I remember like my first solo at this big performing arts center that my high school was doing a concert at, and um, like the Pops concert in theater. It was my first big solo, and I remember like the other people in the choir, like they were just, their nerves were like getting the best of them, like, um, this one girl had like suddenly uncontrollable vibrato and people were like forgetting the lyrics and like they're dropping like flies. And I was like, wow. And you know, I was so more nervous than I'd ever been in my life. And, and I like almost missed my cue and I like ran and I was out of breath and I was backstage and it was a big moment. And then I went on and I sang better than I ever had sang in my life. And I was like high on that for like until the next year. Mm -hmm. And I, f I felt at that point, like, I don't know that I was comfortable with it. I'm still not. But I think I was like, oh, I'm good at this. You learned that you could embrace it. Yeah. And that, yeah. like, special things could happen yeah. in that adrenaline moment. Like, right. like I, I like that sort of risk and f scariness. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think that uh, shows in your improvisations uh, yeah. st still that sense of adventure yeah. and risk. Let's, let's see what the reward is for this. Yeah, totally. Um, well, what about reading? You, as I always wonder about people who end up writing lyrics if, mm. if, if they were particularly avid readers Actually, as youngsters. Yeah, I was. What kind of things did you, uh, all kind of stuff? Or what, 
appeal yeah, to all you kind most. Of stuff. That's I've never been asked that before. Uh, yeah, I love, especially as a kid, I loved, loved, loved reading. Huge bookworm. Um, I mean, I read like whatever I could get my hands on. I've always just loved like. This is sort of this going back to saying I like to read my mom's like book club books. So like mm. those were inappropriate. And that's why I was like, oh, let me see Not what's on up. Any shelf in let Florida, me see what's up with this. Yeah. Um, so I was reading like really, um, r at a really advanced level really early. And I was really interested in just knowing about the adult world. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. w and what about trying your hand at writing uh, little stories or poems or anything? Yeah, what I love, I've always loved, Did I've always been a, a writer. Like, just like I like, I have always kept a journal, and I like. I've always loved writing. I didn't write songs until way later. Mm -hmm. Honestly, just because of um, maybe I started when I was young writing songs. Like I can remember a few, but then I stopped just because of I was like, oh well, I'm not good enough to write songs. How would I add my songs to the catalog of songs, which is the thing that I respect more than anything else? Um, so yeah, I only started songwriting really in the last like five years. Mm -hmm. Well, you've you've done. Uh, maybe it was worthwhile waiting because you've, mm. you you really I think emerged uh, pretty quickly with your mm. uh, a voice your own as a, as a writer. It uh, that you, it works very nicely with your 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 voice. So it all ma your singing voice uh, your and your writing voice are mm. well matched. I think. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what, what about the music? Uh, any piano lessons, guitar lessons, flute lessons, trombone mm. lessons? Um, I took piano lessons from my neighbor growing up, and she did quit on me because <laughs> I was didn't learn to read the music. Uh. And we were getting pretty far along, and I was just doing it by ear. by ear. Yeah, it was really hard for me to learn to read music. I'm still not that good. It was so, it didn't click in my brain at all. Um, and my ear definitely like compensated for it, which allowed me to like not learn. Um, so I didn't really learn that till like high school, college. Um, um, I took, yeah, I wanted to learn everything. Like I, I learned guitar when I was in um, high school, mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, but ultimately I sort of like, was really just interested in singing, and I would pick up something and learn it a little bit. And, mm -hmm. But I, I just love singing. Yeah, ever in a rock and roll band or a funk band or anything of that nature? No, I was never in a rock and roll band. But there's still time for me. Yeah, yeah, it's not over. <laughs> yeah. Could be a country star before this is yeah. all done. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what country, but we'll figure that out later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, well, you uh, by by high school then you're uh, were you thinking this might be something you could pursue music? Music? The, yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't think it was an option. Like my parents are really um, very artistic people, um, respectively, um, and together, and um, they, but they never made like that their their life's work. So they're both mm -hmm. art teachers, high school art teachers, uh -huh. and my dad's also a contractor and builds homes and my mom an amazing visual artist um so like that's where i got it but um they didn't you know they're like you should make money right I, like try at least and um yeah so it didn't really seem like a career thing until i don't know like i really got into the high school um we really did have a good music program in high school yeah, and good. I was encouraged by my band director um, to pursue that. And, and I I think me and my mom had a discussion at some point, and she sort of gave me her blessing, which she, <laughs> she may regret <laughs> or <laughs> regretted later. But, yeah, I think maybe later in high school I was like, okay, I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah, I want to do this. Yeah. Well, you, you went on to um, study jazz history at San Francisco State. We'll talk about yeah. that some more after our next musical interlude. You guys play us a couple more tunes. Okay, deal. Yeah. Let's do, um, let's do the Italian one. Yeah? 
Okay, this is a song that Oscar and I both just learned. Um, and I'm just gonna go, I gotta tell you the lyrics because um, it's easier if you know what I'm saying. It goes, the night of goodbye, there's darkness inside and around. Then one day, whenever God wants to, whenever God feels like it, a new day comes. Our empty home will be flooded with sunlight, but you won't be there, my love. The night of goodbye, with not even a word, you against my chest, you don't want to leave me alone. I promise you, love, that I will remember the good you've given me and the good I've given you. Goodbye. Like a thread that breaks, like sand that you can never have between your fingers, now your life will become distant from mine. The night of goodbye, there's darkness inside and around. Then whenever God wants, a new day comes. Our empty home will be flooded with sunlight, but you won't be there. I'll miss you. Goodbye. La notte dell'addio, il buio dentro intorno, poi quando vuole Dio si accende un nuovo giorno, la nostra casa vuota il sole inondarà e tu non ci sarai e tu non ci sarai amore mio la notte della dia neppure una parola tu contro il petto mio non vuoi lasciarmi solo io ti prometto amore che del bene che ti ho dato a Dio Il 
Oscar, Oscar, Yoli. Thank you. <laughs> Max, are you okay <laughs> to come back? Oh, that song is called La Notte del Adio, The Night of Goodbye. And it's sung by, um, well, not originally, but um, this one Italian singer, her name is Ornella Vanoni. I'm so in love with her. I feel like she's teaching me Italian. I feel like she's my best friend. Um, we've never met, but um, she is alive and um, I'm a huge fan. Okay, this song is um, called This Time The Dream's On Me.
the dreams I need It would be fine To be certain I'm the one To know that I at least I supply the shoulder you cry upon To see you through Tell you everything you want to be This time, the dream is on me. Harold Arlen, Johnny Mercer, and beautifully done by Lex Warshawski here at the bass, ladies and gentlemen. Oscar Rossinoli on the piano. And the leader of our trio today, Gabrielle Cavasse. Wonderful. So, Gabrielle, you went, went up uh, to the Bay Area, to college, San Francisco State, and studied jazz history, music history, all well, kinds of things that you wound up in history, I think. Yeah, I think that that was, ended up being my specialty. Um, I didn't, I mean, I think I didn't want to take vocal lessons and that's why I went in that direction. Uh -huh. And I was really so interested in, um, in like not anyone telling me how to sing. <laughs> But um, learning about, yeah, history and like my ethnomusicology um, class, classes, and just sort of learning about music in all its forms. Yeah. Well, uh, th was that born of a bad experience with a teacher or just something you didn't It was want? actually, yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's not like a, I don't need to talk trash on San Francisco State University. I had a great time there. Um, but yeah, I think... Uh, there's not a lot of good instruction for singers. And maybe if you go to um, a really well-funded, prestigious you, you know, conservatory, it could be better. But, um, or maybe not. But yeah, I think I was competing for gigs with the um, teacher that I had. Oh, my. And she got really mad, actually. <laughs> and so I was like, well, I'm not going to take lessons anymore. So yeah. So you went to the real school, Club Deluxe. Yeah, exactly. That is the real school. And I, there were, at that time, it actually cl just closed down. But um, there was like a jam session like Monday through Thursday. Hmm. And um, not, not truly, but like it was sort of like a jam. And um, yeah, that is, I was there like every night. And now, from what part of uh, San Francisco was that in? That's in the Haight-Ashbury. In the Haight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I lived in the Sunset, I think, mm -hmm. most of the oh time yeah. I was there. Just a little west, uh -huh. west of the Hague. Yeah. Uh, well, um, what kind of uh, groups were playing at Club Deluxe? What, what all were you exposed to there? It's really specific. It, they're very like bebop. Okay. Yeah, and so that was the language that I was learning. Mm. And um, there's some really great musicians out there who, yeah, taught me that language. So you, you had a chance to work there or to sit in some? or Yeah, it was years before like I ever had a gig there. But um, yeah, I was just sitting in. Mm -hmm. And listening L yeah, full time. Listening. Yeah, mostly listening. Yeah, drinking. Uh, what other uh, kind of things were you listening to? Or was between those two things, school and that, was that about all you had time for? Well, there's like different parts of that period of my life. At the beginning, I was such a purist. And I was like, um, not listening to current music at all. Like there's this whole portion of time where I was just like, oh, I love jazz. And um, I was so depressed and did not have friends. And I was collecting records. And I would go to like Amoeba Music and a lot of other 
great record shops that were around at the time. And um, yeah, and I would listen to those and I would just pick stuff up and then I would go to like the session later. And so I was just really like learning a lot during that time. But then I moved to Oakland and then there was a lot, there's amazing hip hop in Oakland. And I sort of got more involved in like the, I guess like underground mm -hmm. hip hop scene that's there. And I would just hop on stage and sing <laughs> something. Mm -hmm. And um, it was such a similar, it's like seamless. It's like almost was the same thing to me of just Im improvising and. Um, improvising lyrics as opposed to notes. Yeah, you know, some, well sometimes. both. I mean I wasn't, didn't become a rapper. Like I was, yeah, still improvising notes. and. And also the scene there with hip hop is super like, um, like, I don't know, like here it's different, like people there are really just like in sort of these, there's like, what's it called? Um, ciphers, like where oh people are just like freestyling all night. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's a, again, a, a completely uh, um, engaged, but a different experience from what you had had as a performer. Yeah, but so similar. And but so like I was sort of living this like mm -hmm. doing both of those things and I think they both influenced mm -hmm. me a lot. Now you mentioned not writing songs until later. Is this the time when you began to, not to yet. write? Not yet. Yeah. We'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Still in the future. Um, well, did you uh, go straight through there at uh, San Francisco State? Oh, no. It took Always, me like yeah. seven years or something. Oh, very good. <laughs> I always say it's a crime to, to uh, uh, try to pack a, a four-year degree into anything less than seven. Yeah, I wasn't ready when I went to school. I was didn't want to go, and I shouldn't have gone. I should have waited. And, um, and so I did a lot of, like, wasting time, and I'm, I wasn't very good in school because I was, like, going out all the time, and I was learning, but in a different way. And... Um, yeah, I, I went to France, and I lived mm. there for like a year, studied abroad, mm. but there wasn't much schooling happening with that, and then... What about uh, music? Were you able to do I, Yeah, music? I was in a, like a hip-hop band in oh, France, okay. yeah. Um, and then I came back, and then that's when school started to like click for me, like the last two years. Yeah. Is there anything precipitated that you're in your mind, or you just think you were finally... Uh, old enough, ready to uh, sort of finish that up and move on. Uh, yeah, the latter. I think I was always trying to quit school, and then I finally decided, you know what, I'm just going to finish this for my mother. And and I also had some really good teachers um, who I was maybe just ready to hear just because I was a little more mature, had a little more life experience, and I was enjoying school at that point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where did you... Uh, well, when did you first be, uh, start thinking about New Orleans or first come here? I never wanted to come here. It was my friend um, convinced me to go on vacation with her here, which is super unlike me. <laughs> like I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I travel a lot, but I don't really go on vacation, you know? <laughs> and um, so, yeah, we went, and I was here for like one hour. And I was like, oh, what? <laughs> like, I have to live here. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to do it, but yeah. yeah. Welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there's a, there's yeah, it hands are going up all over the auditorium. It called to me. <laughs> yeah, I just was like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. The uh, it's amazing. We don't have exact figures, but every year after Carnival and Jazz Fest, a number of people who came here for one or the other never leave. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I understand the uh, the sensation, but you you found a very. Uh, um, accepting and open and interesting place to I did unlike what you d you thought it may be, be I guess y since you hadn't really thought about moving here or didn't want to move here or didn't know much about it yeah I don't know if I had any like preconceived notions about it but um I guess I do feel really comfortable here because there's so much um, craziness going on and such a blend of cultures and music and um yeah it really feels like so warm and comforting for me to mm -hmm. be here. Yeah, within a, a short route through a couple of neighborhoods, you could hear just about anything on mm -hmm. the musical spectrum. Yeah. From um, from hip hop to uh, free jazz. Yeah. You know, and uh, that's not true everywhere. No, it's not. Yeah. 
Well, was it pretty quick that you came on and packed up and came down here after that yeah, experience? Yeah, like six months. Yeah. Yeah. And when you first hit town, um, did you know anybody? Not really. Um, I moved with a friend who uh -huh. had taken me here on vacation. And, um, but no, I mean, I didn't, but she did. She knew some people. And then it's very generous, like, um, unlike San Francisco, where I was literally sitting in the same club for, like, years before they ever asked me on stage. <laughs> um, yeah, like, the first night I was there, I was singing. Oh, wow, well, yeah. So th that, that fast. Um, what kind of um, opportunities did you, did you begin to get here as a, as right. a singer? How did you find your way onto the stage? I, I mean, there that night, yeah. but... Uh, you, you, how did you go about that? Um, I don't know. It just seems like it just happened in terms of how I, like, you know, meet people and get on stage. But, and that's really natural. And I think it's one of the easiest places to do that. You just are a musician. You come to New Orleans and you're at least given a shot <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> immediately. Um, but... Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I loved the type of gigs that I got right away. There's sort of like, you know, I, I'm not a traditional jazz singer. Right. And that was the first type of gigs I got, like on Frenchman. And um, I wasn't even very like good for the role. So there was a big adjustment period of there being a role for a singer here. And me trying to do it, but actually not really fitting in. Um, and not liking it and feeling like, I was like, you know, selling out and being weird and being fake and, uh, you know, like for tourism. And um, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that, but just like you have to do what you love to do. And right. yeah. So yeah, it was a little hard at first. And then I sort of, um, I started this session that was at the Starlight. Oh, yeah. And Lex was on it. And um, I. That was my first sort of time being like, this is what I want to do. And this isn't a gig that was offered to me. This is a gig that I'm making that is representative of the kind of community that I want to be in and the kind of music I want to make right now. And I grew tremendously in that space and developed a community of people who supported each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and how long did you uh, have that gig? Um, good question. I think like three years or something. So it was, was only ended because of COVID. Uh, it was a, from a, not long after you got here till 2020 yeah. sometime. So that was a real base of operations and a chance to widen your uh, uh, acquaintance, acquaintance with yeah. the world here. And, and make a lot of, you know, connections here. And um, I learned a lot from obviously going to people's gigs and sitting in and learning, but I think that was people's opportunity to see me right. and what I do. And um, yeah, I, I thought that was a really special place for me. I read that um, one of my favorite people in the world, as well as one of my favorite artists, Jermaine Basil, yeah. was a big influence. She just turned 21, uh, 90, 21? 21. <laughs> yeah, 91 yeah. this past, uh, moving like she's 21 again, Yeah. at 91 this past Tuesday. Yeah, when I, I mean, she was one of the best singers I ever heard in my life, and one of the first um, people I heard when I moved here. And um, yeah, I'm extremely inspired by Jermaine Basil. Yeah, she is uh, someone who, like a lot of people in her generation, Ellis Marcellus, um, Harold Batiste, Alvin Batiste, Clyde Kerr Jr., uh, great artists, but they also dedicate a lot of their lives to being mm -hmm. educators. Mm -hmm. And they really have that thing here of passing it on that is a big part of yeah. the musical community here. Yeah, I think I really love that because I don't know that I really had that mm -hmm. um, growing up, so I just think it's really nice and yeah, I yeah. like that. It's a great group of folks. Well, um, I want to talk a little bit uh, in our next segment about uh, some recent work you did with um, Ryan Hansler. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what's ahead, but for now, more music. Please. I like this. Okay. Um, let's do uh, your everything. This is um, 
this is a song that I wanted to play with Oscar specifically. Um, it's a Chick Korea song. It's called Your Everything. Hey, 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 hey,
Thank you. Oh. We're going to play a song called Vanity, featuring Lex Warshawski on the bass. That's Oscar Rossignoli. This is a song that's off um, my first record, my only record. Um, and it's, I don't know if there's any other version. I think um, only the Sarah Vaughan version on the great album After Hours, which is also a trio, which is cute. Rare sort of format for a singer, I think. Usually it's like duo or quartet. Because I'd rather be all by myself instead of laughing with the crowd. If I don't care to be part of their gaiety, they say to me, Gabby, don't be so proud. But how are they to know Ooh, I'm looking high and low for love that used to be my own? Oh, no, 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 I ain't never even glance when I'm offered new romance. I can't because I'm yours alone. So will it be as long as we are far apart? It may be vanity to think you'll come to me. But is it vanity to hide a broken heart? There's too many children. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I could change it a little. Mm, I could do a different, I could just sing a regular blues. Come back, Oscar. 
I'm really moving them around a lot. Okay, let's do blues. E flat. I don't know what's going to happen. I know what I'm going to do. Billy Holiday Blues. This is my favorite singer. My man don't love me. He treats me oh so me. My man don't love me. He treats me oh so me. He's the lowest man I've ever seen. He wears high striped pants. The stripe. Never let them get yellow. But when he starts into love me, he's so fine and mellow.
crazy day, stupid days, and you know I'm wrong. Baby, love is like a faucet. It turns off and on. <laughs> you know that love is like a water faucet, baby. It turns off, and sometimes it turns off. Sometimes you think it's on, babe. No, no, no. It's turn off and go. Fine and mellow. Fine and mellow. Lex Warshawski at the bass, ladies and gentlemen. Oscar Rossignoli on the piano. And Gabrielle Cavasse. Beautiful job on those fine and mellow lyrics. So you hit New Orleans in 2017. Mm -hmm. 2018, you're a finalist in the Sarah Vaughan International Competition. Yes. Jazz vocal competition. And... Um, didn't win that year, but you went, when was the next competition that you entered? 2020? 2020. Mm -hmm. And then something happened after, after the competition that postponed actually... COVID. Uh, yeah, awarding that. Yeah, something happened. So something. There was something. I couldn't yeah, remember what it was. Weird. Yeah, uh, But then you uh, uh, were uh, the winner in 2020, or co-winner in 2021. Yeah. Um, meantime... Uh, not too long, I think, after you moved here in 2017, a pianist by the name of Ryan Hansler moved to town, and we all enjoyed hearing his work. Came here from North Carolina. I think he's from Boston originally, but uh, had been teaching at North Carolina, came and started working his way onto the scene. And you two ended up, uh, I think, during COVID, uh, actually getting a duo together and, and making a lot of music. Well, I mean, I was making music with Ryan long before, before that. that. Yeah. Because he was the first person that I called at the Starlight. Ah, so he was part yeah. of that whole mm -hmm. situation for yeah. you. Yeah, and that's how we got so close. Um, yeah, I called. I, when I got the gig at the Starlight, I really I knew it was going to mean a lot to me, and it was really important to me. Because I didn't really like what I had going on, so I was like, well, I better do something I like. And uh, yeah, I called. I, we didn't know each other, hmm. um, but I called him. I just called the best people that I knew. And um, yeah, and that's how we met. And then we were working so much in that group with Lex. And then um, during COVID, Ryan and I lived really close, like we're we were sort of neighbors. And yeah, we, we finally completed our duo record that we started working on during that time. During that period. It, and that's coming out this year? I don't know. Don't know? Yeah, it is coming out this year. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it really grew into something else. And, and uh, he just actually joined the Navy. So, you know, I'm like all reflective about all the music that we made. And um, I'm even, you know, more excited about the record, I guess. Yeah. I look forward to hearing that. Uh, it, any uh, expected date on that yet, or, or does it have a title yet? It does have a title. Um, it's called In the Night I Go Searching for You. And I was going to release it in April, but just like the business side of things becomes more and more present in my life as I go on. And so now I'm, I don't know. Be coming at a time where I don't know. Not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. But it is in the can. It's ready to go. It's in the can, at some as point. They say. Yeah. As they say. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, you also began to work uh, with um, Adonis Rose in the New Orleans Jazz yeah. Orchestra. You started, and you're just off a, a, a tour, well, a short tour, a trip to um, 
St. Thomas with them. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I love the New Orleans Jazz Orchestra. That was a goal of mine when I first moved to town. I was like, I want to sing with them. And then, um, yeah, I really only started working with that group in 2020. Mm -hmm. Like er before pre-COVID. Right. Yeah. I think I, uh, first time I saw you was at Jazz Fest with them. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, yeah they've given me so many opportunities, and I, I absolutely love working with the big band. Yeah. Um, now, uh, we've postponed till some point when you start writing songs. I know some of your originals are on that 2020 mm -hmm. first record. So was that here in your own? It was here, yeah. I think I really started finishing my songs when I um, set a date to record my record. I always just do things the hard way like that. Like I have to make myself do it. And I knew I wanted to release original music. And um, actually when I won, or when I didn't win the Sarah Vaughan competition, I started making a record um, that was way more, you know, traditionally what you might expect from someone like me at that time, like a kind of like, not traditional jazz, but more like classic right. vocal jazz record. And then I was like, you know what? No, this is not what I want to do. And I went a different direction. I hired Jameson Ross to produce that album. And I showed him a lot of the songs that I had been working on and were like not even near completion. And um, he was like, yeah. And he believed in me a lot and really showed me a lot of um, like confidence and strength and resolve to do what you want to do. And he just helped me so much. And uh, yeah, then I made the record that I wanted to make with my friends with um, original music. Yeah, and that is self-titled, Gabrielle it Cabasa. Is. Mm -hmm. um, just couldn't think of anything better. The um, other thing that, that, that uh, I admire about y your um, the sets that you perform is you have a real talent for picking older tunes th and turning them into very much sounding like maybe you wrote them, mm -hmm. certainly tunes that you bring a lot uh, of yourself to. I'm thinking of, of uh, Jim, for yeah. example, a, a tune from the early 40s that sounds like it could have been written last year. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I l this is how I learned music. I love songs. I love old songs, new songs, it doesn't matter to me. And I, I really connect with lyrics and I maybe mean, not even lyrics, music. And sometimes I feel like it's played in a style where the modern listener can't really connect with it. Right. And so I think that's important to me. It's not like that conscious, but I, I always want to bring that music to um, modern audiences. Mm -hmm. Do you spend much time searching for those things? Do you listen to a lot of older music? Yeah. I don't know if searching is the right word, but um, actually maybe it is the right word. I have been searching for songs and music that I like my whole life. Like when I was a kid, I would be like on LimeWire, hmm. um, like torrenting entire artist discographies <laughs> and listening. And I've always been highly opinionated and like, I didn't really, you know, I just wanted to listen to stuff that I liked. And so I'd be like, no, no, don't like it, don't like it, don't like it. Oh, I love this, I love this. So just collecting things that like are like pleasing to my ear has been like a lifelong, um, I don't know, journey. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I'm like actively searching anymore, but like sort of, maybe it's just part of who I am. Are you, do you kind of keep a, a list or a catalog of things that, uh, uh, such things? Or mm -hmm. ideas for songs e even? Yeah, yeah, you should see my notes in my um, phone, like the mm -hmm. notes app. Oh, yeah. Also I keep journals, like there's just so many pages of, and you know, those ideas, there's no really good way for me to catalog my ideas, they are mostly lost. Because when am I gonna open up that notebook again and scroll down all the way? <laughs> But I'm definitely always taking notes and trying to, yeah. I, th I always think those things are sort of working their way through your I do too. creative system anyway. Yeah. yeah, I do too. And sometimes you have that moment where like you don't realize that you did something because you, like I have that all the time where I'm like, 
I thought of something way like years ago and then put it in my right. work today. Right. And I never conscious, I didn't remember it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. It's like that with everything, fashion, music, art, lifestyle choices. Yeah, I think every, everything in its own time. It emerges yeah. at its own pace. Totally. Yeah. Well, uh, I think we have time for one more tune. Mm. So I have two. pick wisely. Two is good. Two short. Two is twice. Two is twice as good as one. They're both short. Okay. Lay it on us. I can't do one because no. it just wouldn't make sense. I'm gonna play um, guitar. <laughs> I really wanted to um, do this because this is how I learn. It's very embarrassing for me. I'm very bad at guitar, and um, I'm trying to get better. I have this affliction with like um, acrylic nails, and I always want to wear them and be so fancy, and then you can't really play guitar. So yeah, I really started um, practicing guitar in, during COVID, and I bought this guitar. And, Loving it. Um, but yeah, guitar's hard, and, and I'll never practice if I don't have a gig, so the, here we are. Um, yeah. This is called My Romance. Oh, and I wanted to say about this song, too. I just was learning it the other day because so much I think of my, um, my love for like these jazz standards is like, you know, life is so hard and love is so hard, and these songs, um, they just make it seem so easy. And I love that, and it's so simple. And um, that's like a little dream world that I love to live in. So, And that's not even the songs I write, either. The songs I write are fraught with complication. But the songs that I, these songs are not. And um, yeah, that's something that I also like to keep present in my shows. My romance. How am I going to do that? Really, I should put it over here. Yeah. I just want this to go as well as it can, you know. Thank you, Tis. <laughs> My romance doesn't have to have. A moon in the sky My romance Doesn't need a blue lagoon Standing by No
Okay, now we, we will end. Um, this is called Bossy Nova, and it's um, an original song, the only original I'm doing today. Um, and it's about if I wasn't a musician, how much easier my life would be. <laughs> um, and how I would just live on an island. It's one of the most like indulgent songs I've ever written. Um, I, I would live on an island and I would open an Italian restaurant and I would not be ambitious at all. But the song is really that, um, you know, I really, I really love this a lot and I believe so much in my dream or I would not put myself through um, the trials of this profession. Sunshine on my behind I wouldn't care if they missed me Small Italian restaurant by the sea Wouldn't be so ambitious The promise of my 
Oh, yeah. The Gabrielle Cavassa Bossa Nova, the new thing. This is Lex Warshawski on piano, ladies and gentlemen. Oscar Rossignoli on the bass. Oscar Rossignoli on piano. The beautiful vocals, guitar, the writing of Gabrielle Cavassa. Beautiful work. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you all for attending this session today. I hope you can be with us on Thursday, May 11th, when our next Talking Jazz with Brett Caston in concert will feature the wonderful Crescent City vocalist and multi-instrumentalist Aurora Nealon. Thanks for being here today. Give it up for Fred Caston. Thank you very much. For future programs, please check out nolajazzmuseum.org or also nps.gov backslash jazz. We have another program tomorrow with our artists in residence, Siddiqui and Wobo. They will be at 916 North Peters. Again, 916 North Peters. Once again, give it up for Fred Caston and Gabrielle Cavassa. See you next time.